Uh, so my name is uh, Dmitry Butyarin and uh, my original connection to the space is uh, through my son uh, Vitalik who has uh, originally created Ethereum uh, and uh, around him this uh, amazing community of people has uh, gathered if you will right and um, I am a high-tech entrepreneur I've been all of my life in technology and built a number of businesses and uh, I'm 47, so at this stage of my life, I've been spending more and more time also on uh, thinking and, and understanding, if you will, the human side of things. Like, you know, technology is, is awesome and important and fun, but then also technology is built by and for humans. And, you know, understanding their humanity in each one of us uh, from, you know, people who are building the project, people who should be using the project. So that's kind of that's what I'm more and more what that's what I'm passionate about and uh, my role here at the conference is really I see as I, as I'm going around and I'm talking to people about their projects I'm really trying to understand deeply why are they building what they they building how is it going in terms of uh, you know sometimes when we want to achieve a certain goal let's say build this project it's very easy for us to get so focused on uh, the result that we just uh, uh, stop realizing we don't realize that we actually miserable in the process and all we thinking about oh you know when we get to this wonderful outcome and you know this happens this milestone so many users or so much money in this project then we will feel differently but the thing is like you know it's always a lie and you know we get to this goal and maybe we feel differently for a little bit but then it's uh, changes again and you know unless we become aware of what's happening with us uh, moment to moment on an ongoing basis, then we will never really be in that state that we want to be. Because in my perception, really, when we build in projects, when we're doing stuff, end of the day, we kind of optimize for happiness, right? And uh, consciously or subconsciously. So that's kind of like what I'm trying to have conversations with people about is like, okay, why are you doing this? Like, is it making you happy? If not, then why not? And how can you be more aware of what's happening with you and uh, with this project and so on? Obviously, meditation is uh, one important tool, and uh, there are many ways to, to do meditation, right? And uh, uh, the success of this little apps like you know Headspace and Calm and so on, it's really amazing that they have millions of people. It clearly demonstrates that there are lots of people who are re realizing that, yeah, you know, those, doing those kind of things is, uh, is really helping me in some way. And, um, and I think that using those apps is a wonderful starting point. But uh, in a way, I think of meditation as a Trojan horse. You start with something really simple, and it's uh, even by spending like one, two, five minutes a day, you can already be way ahead of where you were without it. But as you go deeper into this practice, and if, if you can start allocating, let's say, 15 minutes a day into practices like meditation and, you know, and there are all kinds of types of meditations, right? Then you actually start to become more and more aware and connected with yourself. What are you feeling moment to moment? And, and, and uh, the way I think about this is when you're doing this, a whole new channel of information becomes available to you. Because normally we just drive things forward with our thinking mind, with our intellect. And, you know, let's plan this, let's move forward. But what, what's happening when we do that a lot is that we actually stop noticing a lot of things that oh you know we're going forward here but you know what my co-founder is really burned out so he's actually uh, you know his uh, his relationship is breaking up all kinds of stuff and then if we're not noticing those little signs in ourselves and other people then we end up at this project and then things uh, unexpectedly go and they uh, things fall apart right so really it's about how do we retrain on a daily basis and you know so yeah and there are all kinds of breathing exercises, meditation exercises. It doesn't really matter what you do. Any kind of smart person can uh, uh, go online and do a quick Google uh, search for you know daily practices of mindfulness, meditation, breathing. Right. So, but the most important thing is like uh, finding the one that resonates with you. Similar to physical exercise, like sometimes people, uh, when I talk to people about physical exercise, I've been always uh, very mindful of my body and you know investing into that. And I always tell them the best exercise is the one that you actually do. And the same thing with those kind of uh, mindfulness practices. Like, can you find the practice? You know, maybe it's using this app. Maybe just do this breathing technique. 
maybe use this in your Muse headband. There are so many options these days and it doesn't matter. Try a bunch of them and then find one that gives you joy. Then, you know, you can spend even five minutes a day or maybe 15 minutes a day doing this to ground yourself and, you know, go into your awareness. Oh, I think it's it's really awesome. Like all in all, that's uh, the, what impresses me about East Denver is uh, that it's not just like uh, some hackathons. They're all about people building stuff. You know, let's kind of head down, be with our computers. But there's so much other stuff happening here. This wonderful art and design and people having fun and you know that Zen zone and you know that you know space with music and uh, so on. So. It really gives people an opportunity to engage with their different senses and not just spend the whole day like thinking, 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 right? But, you know, then you can do that. So I'm really uh, grateful that their organizers have done such an amazing job of kind of like doing this job of integration of all these different things. Yeah, like I love it. It's really about at least starting to think about this, right? Like, am I, how am I feeling in the moment, right? Am I constantly feeling tense and just like thinking that when I achieve this result, then, you know, I'll feel differently because this is kind of a trap that most of us have been in, right? And uh, if we can find a way to at least start thinking like, can I on a daily basis ask that question to myself? How am I feeling today, right? And, you know, and from this little one question and spending like one, two minutes, like just reflecting on that, then you can go so much uh, further down, down the rabbit hole. And there are all kinds of wonderful books and resources and podcasts and spiritual teachers, whatnot, right? Their universe is so big and so exciting. Even just reflect on uh, the facts, so look around Ethereum community. There are different communities out there, you know, let's say generic blockchain community, Bitcoin community, Tron and whatnot. And uh, originally when uh, Ethereum community, people who came together to build what, you know, what was uh, their original idea of Ethereum, actually there was a, I know that the group of people, one of the things they were like uh, keeping in mind is like, oh, you know what? When we were involved in Bitcoin space, as many of them were, uh, they felt like, oh, there's a lot of uh, acrimonious, you know, anger, you know, conflict and this kind of stuff. So let's try to build this community differently, right? And I, I think that, you know, looking back the last uh, six, seven years, that actually Ethereum community has done a really awesome job of uh, doing that. It's not perfect, nobody is perfect, right? But if you feel the general vibe of the community, and it's really just, it starts with how do you interact with other people, uh, offline and online, right? And if you look at like all their interactions on social media and Twitter, right? And it, it's funny, like when you see those interactions and people attacking each other, right? And the thing is like uh, really important to start with understanding that whatever is the way people are reacting to you, it's not because of you, but it's really because of what's going on with them, right? And I remember when Vitalik started, you know, on this path, and uh, then a lot of people attacked him, like, you know, building like all kinds of, you know, posting all kinds of free stuff online. And he's asking like, oh, but why are they doing this? Like, you know, I'm trying to build this good thing. And like, why are they attacking me? And I told him, you know what, it has nothing to do with you. They are suffering. They're trying to deal with their own pain and, you know, like some projections of that. And this is the reality, right? So as long as uh, we in our community can do better and better job of recognizing that and uh, being open, uh, and uh, like you know, little things like we have uh, uh, Ethereum Classic at this conference, which I think is awesome, right? That we're able to embrace those guys and not see them as competition or whatever and do that. And today I saw uh, Charles Hoskinson, the Cardano guy. And, you know, so like I think it's, it's awesome that our com Ethereum community is able to embrace that uh, uh, and not be, not feel like, oh, we're this and we're building this against them. But it's more like we're building this and how can we collaborate and build something bigger when we are together. Competition. It's funny, like many things in life, when we pursue them, they like butterfly, it flies away. But when you sit still and you, you know, have the right energy, the butterfly will sit on you, right? And uh, the reason, so Vitalik as a person, you know, with his involvement in Ethereum, he's uh, quite financially successful. But I think the key reason for that is because he never cared about money. Like until very recently, all of his possessions could fit into one large duffel bag, right? So it's really when we are pursuing that and we're trying to reach that, that it's, uh, it's so hard to reach that, right? But when we actually 
connect with what's going on inside of us, our internal joy and peace, and we're trying to do stuff that makes us happy. Uh, then we can attract all kinds of, you know, the right relationships, we can uh, attract monetary success. And going back to the first uh, part of your question about human rights and, you know, their, it was a big question too, but I'll comment on one direction there is I think that the most important thing every human can do is work on themselves. Because the more we can increase our own awareness of what's going on with us, how am I feeling, how am I interacting with other people, and uh, it just automatically creates those waves of different vibration about uh, around you. You know, you feel differently, you support other people, they support other people around themselves and so on. So, you know, we can and we will be changing the world, but not in the way that we think, like, oh, let me try to do this and this will be their, you know, silver bullet solving the problem. But it's more like, let me start with myself and the more awareness I have, the more, you know, I can do for myself, for this project, for my team, for my family, for my community. And there's all kinds of awesome stuff will happen just from that, not just like from some abstract, uh, far away uh, theoretical goal. It might, but in general, like, you know, I'm not a big believer in governments because yeah. governments, uh, the level of corruption and uh, all kinds of other stuff, like, you know, people in government, they will give lip service to wanting to use those kind of systems to do this. But end of the day, uh, politicians are there just to get reelected and to get more money and power. So that's kind of my, and, and I'm saying that with love and understanding, like I understand again, that it's not like because they evil, but yeah, that's their trauma speaking, right? So but yeah, okay. yeah. Like, you know, let's build it uh, in many different ways, but let's not try to like, oh, if we go to United Nations and we convince them to use this technology, it will solve nothing will be solved in this way but you know start with yourself with your project with your community and you can change the world for me it's really about uh, finding a way to understand other people and communicate with them right like for example there's this concept of nonviolent communication nvc and it's a very powerful concept of uh, so for me it's really uh, whenever we try to achieve anything by force, like, oh, let's set this law and this is how we will, you know, do things, this always ends up backfiring. But if we like, okay, I want this, and this is kind of what, what's my passion, and this is what I feel, but let me understand you, and let's then try to kind of collaborate to find a way to achieve, you know, if we can go on a low level, understanding each other of their foundational emotions versus trying to argue about, oh, this is my solution. No, this is my solution. You know, my solution is better. So if we can go down from the level of solutions to level of understanding each other on this deep emotional level, then there is so much more we can achieve.